distinguished guests ladies and gentlemen uh, welcome and greetings to all of you uh, your holiness welcome to the indian business and professional council in dubai we're meeting virtually and hopefully namaste hopefully shortly uh, we will meet in person now uh, it will be a great honor and a pleasure to have you here amidst us um for the benefit of uh, our membership and the guests invited for this uh, webinar uh, his holiness doesn't de- need much of an introduction he is a celebrated personality someone who personifies and embodies empathy compassion and uh, spirituality uh, in the fullness of its term as you saw from the uh, pictorial glimpses presented earlier um he has been uh, a world person in the sense uh, that he has been both in india extensively and even his father in one of the youtubes that i saw remarks that uh, he couldn't find him as he was in the caves for a lot of uh, time when he left uh, the us uh, and uh, spent uh, wandering the himalayas in search of uh, spirituality in search of uh, inner peace and i think that uh, also um, i think resonates well with ibpc more recently uh, we have formed a focus group and a forum um, specifically to address community social responsibility uh, we are a not for profit organization and as befits an a uh, a not for profit organization we should be also engaged with the community around us uh, ultimately uh, humanity is the best form of uh, <clears throat> religion or spirituality uh, in its manifestation and we believe i think uh, this therefore uh, gives us a platform to do some good in the community around us more recently and in the last uh, year or so we have uh, <clears throat> committed uh, substantial funds almost 10% of our balance sheet resources and what we want to do is community social responsibility in a manner where we can actually measure the social impact uh, so it is in a measurable way in a tangible way in a way that addresses the needs uh, uh, both in terms of uh, monetary uh, basis i e in terms of money but also in terms of voluntary efforts that some of our members can put forward specialist uh, resources such as during covid uh, we addressed the financial needs of uh, an isolation center that was set up in dubai at considerable cost as i said earlier we have spent over 500000 dirhams in the last year or so uh, for these initiatives and uh, uh the hope uh, your holiness we like address in its full measure the uh, sense of empathy the sense of community social responsibility that we should develop and deepen uh so with those few words i will invite uh, our distinguished mentor uh, surinder singh kandari ji to say a few words and then it's over to you your holiness thank you uh thank you very much suresh uh it's an honor and pleasure to meet all the members and introduce his holiness swami radhanath ji and today is a very auspicious day today is 5th september and it happens to be the birthday of dr sarvepalli radhakrishnan the second president of india he declared this day as a teachers day today we have one of the best teacher his holiness radha swami ji with us so what better than hearing his discourse in this modern days he will teach us how to be happy and successful in life it also happens to be my birthday and i'm very blessed to be amongst all of you today <laughs> all those members whose spouses are teachers please be nice to them today especially because today is a teachers day and you must respect them and honor them we are all going through a very difficult time due to covid-19 pandemic but let me tell you 
even this time will pass and we'll all come across a stronger and better world at least one thing has been realized by the situation happening in the last few months that we all have realized we are all of one we are all children of one god and the pandemic doesn't differentiate between any religion caste or nationality so we have to be one and help each other i know that swami ji doesn't need any introduction but i think i must mention a few things which he has achieved during his life lifetime his holiness radha swami ji is a new york times best selling author philanthropist and a speaker his work of feeding 300000 children per day in india and establishing hospitals eco villages and several other philanthropic projects has led him to meetings with world leaders such as former us president barack obama former prime minister tony blair david cameron and our beloved prime minister mr narendra modi his holiness is famously known for guiding influencers world leaders ceos and corporations around the world his speaking portfolio includes google apple oxford union cambridge union houses of parliament hsbc headquarters intel facebook princeton mit nasdaq huffington post to name a few he is also the founder of the un awarded govardhan eco village which is 100 acre sustainable community just outside mumbai india this eco village is a model which is equipped to combat some of the world's largest issues including climate change poverty access to healthcare and other un sustainable development goals as well as being a health and yoga resort swami ji has also founded a hospital an orphanage a school and many other philanthropic projects i still remember when swami ji came to dubai last time i had invited him to come to our gurudwara gurunanak darbar and that was the, one of the best times i ever had in the gurudwara when swami ji came and sat with us spoke with us his uh, team told us that he can spend only 5 minutes in the gurudwara and swami ji spent 45 minutes with us it was a great blessing for us and everybody was so happy as he just down to earth a good human being good soul and done so much for society and so much for humanity we bless him good health and all the best in life and now swami ji over to you please and enlighten our members with your wisdom thank you very much om gyan timidandasya gyananjana chalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirbhishesha Shunyavadi अस्तारिणे श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवा श्री गौरभक्तवृंद हरि कृष्ण हरि कृष्ण 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 हरि 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 राम हरि राम 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 हरि हरि It is truly my honor and I am so grateful and pleased to be with all of you today. Thank you so very much Surender for um somehow or other dragging me virtually across the world to be with you. And thank you Suresh and Dilip for this wonderful program. And I 
very special gratitude to everyone connected to IBPC. Um, Suresh has explained some of the objectives and the spirit of the IBPC. And this is so, so hope giving and uplifting to my heart to hear that, <clears throat> that gifted people from various walks of life are, are coming together with the um, purpose of, of uplifting um, our brothers and sisters of humanity. In the introduction that I was given, I was asked to speak on the idea of social responsibility. And this is very much at the heart of the future of the world, how we take responsibility. There are universal moral and ethical principles that are finding their origin in universal spiritual truths. And I would like to very briefly shed some light on these ideas. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said, Sarva Loka Maheshwaram, um, that everything that exists is divine property. Everything that exists is a gift of God. And we are not proprietors of anything in a true sense, because proprietorship means control. And we have a very limited amount of control over what we have. Um, by the changes of this world, it could be taken away. Or through the power of time, everything is taken away through, through death. So really, we are not the proprietors of anything. But in the short duration that we have a lifetime within this world, we are caretakers of divine property. Um, Krishna tells in Bhagavad Gita, I'm the intelligence of the intelligence. I'm the ability within people. I'm, I'm the very living force within everyone. So whatever we have, whether it be our bodies or the gifts of our intelligence or the facilities that we may have acquired in life, um, to use them in harmony with the very spirit of truth and the very spirit of the soul is where we can find the greatest happiness and wherein we can be most empowered to be instruments to give other people happiness. Um, <clears throat> the idea of the environment, it is um, something that people are debating about and arguing about, but universally, from a spiritual perspective, it is just common sense that this whole creation is a gift of God. And Mother Nature we call, because each of us, whatever we have, whoever we may be, we're all like little babies in the lap of Mother Nature. We cannot survive without the sunshine and without the air and without the water and the food that grows. And it's something that we all have in common. 
So to do the best we can to not pollute the environment, but rather to whatever we receive, whatever we take, we try to replenish. That is a responsibility, not only to nature, but to all living beings, because all living beings are dependent on that nature. And it also said in Gita, um, aham bija pratapita, that every living being is a child of the one supreme truth, who we call Krishna or Allah or Bhagavan. There are many names, God. But that one supreme truth, janmadya sayyataha, is the father and the mother of everyone, wherever there's life. And there's a beautiful verse in the Gita, which goes to the heart of all spiritual practices of what is real knowledge. Vidyavanaya sampane brahmani gabi hastini suni chaiva svapake cha pandita samadarshana. The capacity to see the equality within all beings to be an instrument of compassion for all beings is actual knowledge. Why is it knowledge? Because it's in harmony with our own true self. (laughs) Whether one is a billionaire or a person who's homeless, whether one has a PhD or has no education at all. Whether one is a priest or a a prisoner, whether one is of the Christian faith or the Jewish faith or the Hindu faith or Muslim faith or Buddhist faith or Sikh faith or Jain faith or Parsi faith or whether one is Baha'i, or even if it's one is an agnostic or an atheist, whether one is from the East or the West, black in complexion, or white, or red, or yellow, or male, or female. And the Gita extends this, whether one is a human being or an elephant, a cow, or a dog, or a cat, Life is sacred. When we recognize that our own life is sacred, when we recognize our own potential as a part of God, a child of God, an instrument of God's grace and love, when we recognize that, then we will appreciate that that same essence is within everyone. This is a principle which is foundational to all morality, that life is sacred. In the United States of America, um, the, the very basis of how the society was formed was life that all all beings are entitled to life liberty and the pursuit of happiness and interesting the brahma sutra says ananda mayobhyashat something we all have in common is the pursuit of happiness even a little insect is looking for happiness The birds in the sky are looking for happiness. The fish in the sea are looking for happiness. And all humanity, with all of its incredible diversity, is looking for happiness. And part of the process of looking for happiness is to avoid pain because it interferes with happiness. When we understand this idea of equality, 
it goes deeper and deeper as we connect to our own true self. Of all things that are lacking in this world, the most is compassion. Where does compassion come from? Compassion is an expression of love. In, in, the, in the Bible, it is, there is a beautiful verse that says, what profited the person if they get the whole world, but they lose their own eternal soul? And the Gita echoes that same idea. That this body is a temple, temporary residence. And the mind is a facility, a machine within this residence. But the actual resident <laughs> is the Atma the living force who's seeing through the body, who's hearing through the ears, who's tasting through the tongue, who's thinking through the brain. We are that spirit. And that spirit is part of the supreme spirit. Mamaivam so jivaloke. That supreme spirit is who we call Bhagavan or God, or who has many names, who has assumed many forms throughout history in this world to teach us dharma, the same eternal spiritual principles of how to live. And the nature of the soul is to be a instrument of the light of divine love, of God's love. And all spiritual practices and all spiritual purifications in, its, in their original state are meant to awaken that love within us. It had nothing to do with sectarianism or the arrogance that we're better than you or my God's better than yours or any I have rights over you. These are all man-made expressions of the false ego. But actually the purpose of spirituality or all true religion is to transcend, to overcome the false ego and to allow the light of compassion and love to shine from our, from our very souls. When our hearts are clean, then the soul's true compassionate natures can shine through us in whatever we do. The Bhagavad Puran tells, <laughs> That the supreme dharma, Sometimes dharma is translated as religion, sometimes as duty, occupation, nature. The supreme dharma is that which awakens love. Unmotivated, uninterrupted love for God that is expressed through compassion to all beings. To actually really care. And when we, we may realize this and feel that ecstasy of divine love and express it, or we may just understand it. And through that understanding, we take responsibility in whatever we're doing in this world. We have responsibility. The more we have the more we have responsibility. And the joy of life really is in giving. Because things can give some amount of 
pleasure to the mind and to the body. But things can never give satisfaction to the heart. The heart longs to love and to be loved. And that is why in giving we receive. Because when we actually care for others, we become an instrument of love. And by practicing that sincerely, we actually awaken deeper and deeper the potential to love. To make a difference. What we have belongs to God and God loves all children of every variety. May not be pleased with some of the things that we do, but a, but a loving father or mother, whatever the par- child does, they may, be, they may be pleased with the child's activities or they may be totally disgusted with the child's activities, but a good parent still loves the child unconditionally. A good parent, whether that parent is punishing or rewarding, it's always with love. So we are all children of the same supreme source and whatever we have, the greatest joy to our own heart and the greatest way we can actually spiritually progress as well as help the society around us is to see every aspect of our life through the lens of seva. How can I serve? How can I make a difference in people's lives? In the Vedas, there's a beautiful line that I heard from my guru, Srila Prabhupada, and it so deeply affected me. I'm so far away from it but it's, it gives me a compass, a north star to travel toward in my life. And that is that an actual enlightened person is para dukkha dukhi. An enlightened person is not simply someone who knows a lot of verses from scriptures, although that could help. It's not a person who who's famous. It's not a person who's given up eating or sleeping. An enlightened person is a person who feels pain when they see others suffering and feels happiness when they see others happy. Sarve sukhano bhavantu The purpose of all Vedic knowledge, the purpose of all spiritual knowledge that has been revealed to humanity throughout all geographical or throughout time is this sarve sukhano bhavantu. It means let everyone be happy. Is that our motivation? If that becomes the standard of our happiness, then our lives will be transformed. It's about me in the sense that the more I could be, the more I could serve. The more knowledge I have, the more wealth I have, the more abilities I have, the more education I have, the more I'm equipped to serve. But even if we hardly have any of those things, the real joy of life and the real difference we're making in this world is that we have this intention. How I could best serve. How I could best be an instrument to bring happiness to others. We can pray. Pray that we can 
feel for those who are suffering. Not just be charitable in a ritualistic way, but to actually care. Because it's that type of charity that will really, truly endure and make a difference in this world. The idea of karuna or compassion is thoughtful, determined action based on really caring. We care about our family and therefore we're willing to go through so many difficulties to provide for our family, whether it's a mother or a father. Everyone is dedicated to providing for the family, providing love and care and medical attention and, and, and encouragement and, and, and material facilities of shelter and food, entertainment. And the more we connect to the love within our heart and the more we intend to do that, we extend our family beyond just who's living within our house. But we see humanity and gradually we see all living beings as our family. And we want to make a difference. Sometimes it seems there's so much problems in this world. There's diseases and there's prejudices and there's racism and there's poverty and there's so many problems in this world, so many upheavals. What can a little person like me or you do to make a difference? The joy of life is not based on quantity. It's based on quality. If we can help one person, if all we have a capacity to do is smile at someone and light up their day for a second and make them smile, then that's a great thing. If we have spiritual liberation in our heart and we can liberate people from suffering forever, that's a great thing. If we're just struggling in our income and we really sincerely try to help those in, who are in need according to our capacity, that is a great thing. And if we have much intelligence, much wealth, and we can actually help so many people in so many ways, that's a great thing. My beloved teacher, Prabhupada, he, he wrote that God does not see what we do or give. God sees our intention. <laughs> If our intention is because we care, then we will be motivated more dynamically than somebody who's just detached. Real detachment from a spiritual perspective is not giving up our duties or giving up our jobs or giving up our families. Real detachment, because I have seen yogis in caves who are really attached to their persona as a yogi. And I've seen yogis who are truly detached. And I've seen people who are CEOs of international corporations who are truly detached because they see that and they, they, they appreciate that God has given me this opportunity to do something wonderful, to serve others because I care. A grateful heart is a happy heart. And gratitude is not just a feeling, but it's a, it's a way of life where we're grateful for what we receive and we reciprocate by sharing it. Social responsibility 
Um, it is said that the greatness of a person is to be estimated by how that person responds to challenging situations. And there are so many challenges that happen within our own minds, selfishness and greed and arrogance and all these things come to us. And then there's challenges that come from other people and from nature. At this particular time during this COVID-19 um, coronavirus, so much of the world is locked down. In fact, if it wasn't for COVID-19, I may have been physically in Dubai with all of you. I'm probably speaking the same thing. <laughs> But somehow or other, you know, in this, in, in this lockdown, in the pandemic, which is causing so much fear, confusion, uncertainty, economic instability, sorrow of knowing people who are dying or are getting sick, and just the claustrophobia of not being able to travel and interact with people the way we're accustomed to. There's every reason to really develop a negative attitude. But actual greatness is something we all have potential for. And that is in whatever situation to see a light, to see a possibility, to make ourselves better, to feel more compassion for others, to, to reevaluate our own priorities. Because the nature of life in the times that we live is we become caught up habituated in certain ways of living and thinking. And even if we know that I want something spiritual, I want to be an instrument of goodness in my life, still there's so many demands and so many stresses, stresses and so many wants and needs that, that occupy our minds and distract us from the actual calling of our very hearts. And it's like nature has pressed the reset button where we, we have some time to really think about what is really valuable in life? What really is the purpose I want to live for? What are the spiritual values I want to cultivate? Who are the people that could help me cultivate? And what is the practice I can do to actually excavate that peace, that love, that all the great souls have all told is within myself? And to the degree we actually make that connection to those values, to that character, then for the rest of our lives, in whatever situation, we'll be, we'll be working for truth. We'll be working for peace. We'll be working for love. We'll be working for the most meaningful thing. It is our responsibility. And the more we recognize this responsibility to value the character of service to others, the more there's greatness in our life. And please understand 
This is a true legacy to leave our children and our grandchildren and our great grandchildren and all generations after. People, a legacy of compassion, a legacy of spiritual connection, a legacy of passing through great challenges and preserving this spirit of service and compassion. It is the greatest need in the world and it is the greatest wealth that we can pass on to the future generations of our families. And it is this compassion that is the greatest wealth we can share with the world. And it's this wealth that will actually make our hearts truly rich. I thank you so very, very much. Yes. Your Holiness, uh, first of all, thank you very much for enlightened, uh, enlightening us with things which we all feel we know, but uh, we are not conscious. So, you know, that has given us some uh, thing to think about. Uh, there are uh, some questions that uh, we received. Uh, one of them, uh, I mean, you have also probably covered, uh, you would have covered in some form or the other, some of these answers, but uh, probably just to be very specific. So in today's challenging times, you know, people are worried about uncertain future, which you mentioned, about the health, about their livelihood. Uh, many of them are also feeling low and depressed just because they are not able to travel, meet people and all. What exactly specific two or three things that you can suggest in practical people should follow during these times to uh, feel better and, uh, you know, not feel depressed or low? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dilip. Um, when I visited that beautiful Guru Dwaram in Dubai, that surrender um, so kindly, graciously um, invited me to visit. Um, I, w I was sharing a remembrance that some years ago I visited the Golden Temple in Amritsar. And when we were approaching the temple, um, there's a place where you take your shoes off. And I, I saw when I, when I just wear chapels. <laughs> <laughs> but some of my friends that I came with actually had shoes. And when, I, when we came out after going into the beautiful Golden Temple, such a holy place, and hearing beautiful bhajans with tablas and, and harmonium and um, violin, it was just beautiful singing of prayers. When we came out, our shoes were, were, the shoes of my friends were shining with polish. And my chapels, which were kind of dirty, were spotlessly washed and clean. And there were hundreds and hundreds, thousands of people coming into the temple. And while they were inside, everyone's shoes were being polished and cleaned. And then I saw other people everywhere. I, every few feet, there was somebody sweeping, sweeping around the kuns, the small lakes, and sweeping on the steps, and sweeping on the floors, and the marbles, and... And, and I was, I, I talked to some people and one man was, was a multimillionaire who, um, who was the CEO of a major corporation, international corporation. He lives in America with, and he and his family, this is their vacation. More precious to them than going to Disney World or um, Grand Canyon. More precious to them even is to come there and, th and from sunrise to sunset do this seva. 
And they looked happy. And I saw, I met so many people from all different walks of life. Some were simple farmers from Punjab, some were um, medical doctors, and some were lawyers from, from, from London. And they were all just sweeping and shining shoes. And, and they were happier than any tourists I've ever seen because they were doing something meaningful. They were serving. And it, it, it was just such a beautiful thing. So when we value how we can serve, how we can make a difference in other people's lives, then our whole dimension of the outlook of what is happiness changes. So during this particular time, Dalip and um, Suresh, you know, it, it is a troubled times. And we could focus on all the things I want to do, but I can't do. But there are things that we can really focus on doing. And that is awakening the deeper spiritual potential that's within us. And there's, there's four things that I feel are very sacred. And I feel that these four things are at the heart of all true spiritual traditions. There's satsang, to associate with people who give us faith in the potential goodness of life. Um, my own guru, if he would see a spark of goodness in somebody and just fan it, and pretty soon we had faith that there was goodness in us too. And soon that little spark became a fire and we just wanted to light the world in fire of doing good for others. So satsang is very important to be with people who bring out the good in us. Um, there's so many people all over the place and so many, um, you know, through the media, there's so many things that bring out anger and resentment and, and depression and, and within us. But we need to balance that. We can't go away from that, but we need to balance that with people who actually give light to our life remind us of the potential of goodness of who we really are and what we could really do. That's called satsang. And that could be done by physically being with people who are enlightened. It could be done through, um, through Zoom <laughs> <laughs> or various, you know, um, internet or media, you know, connections because we, the internet is like the rest of the world. There's, things that can really enrich us and enlighten us. And there's things that can really degrade us and confuse us. And there's just things that can waste our time. So they're all there on the internet. They're all there in the world itself to choose to actually would be being with people who bring about this positive spirit, who bring about the value of good character and who bring about, you know, the awakening the potential to awaken our love for God and our compassion to others. That's the first thing. And the second is sadhana, to put some quality, priority time aside every day to, to cultivate our own inner spiritual strength. It may be meditation. It may be prayer. It may be puja. In our tradition, we especially chant the, the divine names of God through mantras. But these practices, when they are done sincerely for the right purpose, then it's like, um, it's like tuning in to God's grace. It's like tuning in. When you, know, you, when you tune in, you, you actually access that particular frequency. Well, there's so many frequencies in this world. There's the frequency of collective greed and anger and selfishness and arrogance. But there's also the, 
the frequency of divine love. And our sadhana tunes us into that frequency within us and all around us, and it enriches us. And then through, through that connection, then we live our life with sadachar, which means character. With, with, with sacred moral principles of humility and forgiveness and, and, and fairness and, and honesty. These are all universal principles of character. And they automatically, naturally decorate the heart of one that finds love and one who is really compassionate. And then seva. And then we, we may be locked down now, but um, it, it's a wonderful opportunity to actually enrich ourselves internally so that when this lockdown is done, we have more, more to, to give. We have more to be the best we could be. So in that sense, it's actually very auspicious. And, and although there's a lot of sadness to see suffering, that sadness also can, can be digested in a way that helps us to really care and want to utilize our God-given talents and our God-given resources to make a difference to people who are suffering. I hope that answers your question. Yes, it, it, it does, uh, Your Holiness. There is a question, another question from uh, one of our members. So, dear Maharaj, thank you for sharing the divine teachings and the higher perspective. My question is how to overcome dictates of our false ego so that we live in harmony with others in order to fulfill our social responsibility. So, this is one question. I think in different ways you have answered it, but... Uh, if you want to point out anything specific. The false ego is the misconception that I am this body and I am all the things connected to this body. And therefore, if I'm happy, that's all that matters. I, me, mine. I am this body. This body is me. I'm Indian or I'm American or I'm whatever. And, and whatever is within my control is mine. This, this arrogance inevitably leads to envy, jealousy, because then when somebody has something that we want, whether it be beauty or fame or wealth or, or abilities, then it, it disturbs us because I want it. And this arrogance can make us very depressed. And it can also, if we have more than others, then it can make us feel that I am better than you. I have rights over you. Who are you? Look at me. This is all a disease. What people are struggling to achieve is actually a diseased condition. A healthy condition is when we transcend our ego and we understand that not only am, am I sacred, but everyone is sacred. And therefore, we actually can respect other living beings. That's an expression of a happy heart. A happy heart is one that can respect others. And an unhappy heart, a disturbed heart, is one that's always just thinking of I, me, and mine. And how am I being respected? Um, I, I'd like to share an example. There was one lady, she was in London, and she was dying of cancer. 
I was in Mumbai and her husband, who was also a dear friend, he said she wa- she's going to die in five days and she wants you to be at her bedside before she dies. So somehow or other, um, I made it to London. And I remember something her husband told me, she said just before he, she left. Um, she was an activist woman. She had five children. She was always struggling to, to be the best she could be. And she was always fighting for the underdogs. And that, that's just the way she was. But here she was paralyzed. She couldn't, she couldn't eat without her husband, without food going through tubes. When she responded to nature, her husband or other nurses had to come and clean her body. She was completely incapacitated and she was about to die and she was in terrible pain. And she, she looked and said, you know, compared to what I used to be, what am I now? I seem irrelevant. And then she smiled. She smiled so blissfully, it lit, lit up the room. She, her eyes twinkled and she said, but actually I have unlimited relevance even now because God loves me. She used the word Krishna because Krishna loves me. She said, I have unlimited relevance and nothing could take that away from me, not even death. I'm full and complete right now. And then she smiled even brighter and said, but I cannot think myself better than anyone because God loves everyone. Now here's a person who's really in lockdown, about to die, incapacitated, in pain, about to, you know, leave the physical proximity of her children and grandchildren and everyone. But she saw light, she saw joy, she saw happiness. So let us move toward that light. That is the greatest opportunity we all have in our life. Right. Thank you, uh, Your Holiness. Uh, in interest of time, of course, uh, we would have liked to uh, ask many questions and all, but uh, hopefully uh, soon one day we can have you physically here in good times. Uh, but uh, today it has been really enlightening. So on behalf of IBPC, our chairman, Suresh Ji, uh, all the governing council member and the rest of the members, I would like to wish our express our gratitude and thanks to you for coming. And, uh, you know, it's been a blessing uh, enriching our lives with your uh, knowledge and uh, words. Uh, I'm sure our everybody has, uh, uh, you know, been better uh, knowledgeable, more knowledgeable than what we were before the start of uh, <laughs> this session. So thank you very much, uh, Your Holiness. Also, I would like to thank uh, Surinder Ji uh, for uh, organizing this and uh, we have been talking about it for a few months. Uh, so organizing and you know, uh, Suresh Ji mentioned about uh, what uh, IBPC itself has been doing for CSR and how we help during COVID times, which we are, uh, you know, it's a major part of our objective also, besides the other professional and uh, business related uh, activities. Uh, but Surinder Ji on his own also, uh, I was just talking to him before this, uh, 20,000 cooked foods were distributed uh, during this COVID times, 80,000 kgs of food to the blue collar workers camps where they were lacking the foods or facilities. Uh, there was repatriation to Punjab of 3,500 people, which he himself was involved. And I know of many other members who has been associated with uh, other associations who have uh, also contributed. Uh, he organized 15 chartered flight, 3,500 people and uh, supported the, uh, it was not related to any particular religion or anything, it related to humanity. So uh, that's uh, Surinder Ji. So Surinder Ji, thank you again uh, for all the things and uh, for organizing this. Uh, 
today. And once again, thank you, Holiness, and really look forward uh, for your blessings in near future and seeing you physically here. Thank you. I am, I am truly grateful for this opportunity. Surrender, thank you for including me. Suresh, thank you for leading such wonderful efforts that is doing such, uh, such great things for the world. And thank you, Dilip, for being such a, such a light in today's event. Thank you. Thank you, so much. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. God bless everybody. Thank you.